we are obligated to live first and foremost in God's kingdom as his citizens, as his sons and daughters, under his truth. You think that's going to rile people up? <laughs> oh, yeah, rile the Romans up a lot, huh? That's why Jesus has to tell his disciples, don't be afraid. When you're preaching this message, it's going to rile up the authorities. It's going to rile up the people. Do not be afraid when they threaten your life. And so then Jesus tries to get a little logical. You know, sometimes a lot of, some of us are really logical and intellectual, and we want some logic. Show me how this makes sense, Jesus. So Jesus just makes it real logical. He says, look, okay, if you're going to be afraid, who should you fear more? The one who can kill your body but not kill your soul? Or the one who can kill your body and your soul? Probably the one who can kill your body and your soul, huh? Which is our Heavenly Father. But Jesus doesn't want us to leave us in fear. That's why he begins the second half of the passage today to remind us of our Father's immense, infinite, unconditional love and attentiveness to each one of us. Are not two sparrows sold for a small coin, yet not one of them falls to the ground without your father's knowledge? You are worth more than many sparrows. <laughs> Don't you know your father loves you? Even all the hairs of your head are counted. Parents, you know, like when you're, you have a baby, a child, and you're raising that child, you are so attentive to that child, you basically know every little spot on the child's skin, you know the color of everything, you know, basically know how many hairs they have on their head. You can tell what every little cry, whimper, chuckle means. You grow in such attentiveness, you're so attuned to your child, you know everything about that child. You know, after you feed that child, how quick it's going to be before they burp, before they poop, before they <laughs> fall asleep, right? You get, you've got it down. You're so, how much more do you think our Father is attentive to you and to me? He has a perfect, infinite, divine attentiveness, love for each one of us. Are we living by fear or by God's sacrificial love? Are we letting fear, worry, anxiety rule our life and our decision-making? Or are we letting God's infinite love, truth, and peace rule our life, our thinking, our decision-making?